and welcome to the Fast Arcade Podcast. My name's Graham and I'm joined by Alex. Hiya. And today we're going to be talking about the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which was a long time coming, but now it's here. It's almost like it's always been, I think, in a way. We might as well, straight off the bat, we might as well get into a little bit of that. Um, just that uh, something um, I was thinking about recently was that actually having this game, uh, as amazing as it is, is all, also weirdly like anticlimactic from Do you think so? f- yeah from from the builder and, and that is not uh, an opinion on the game or anything because it, the game is amazing we're going to get into all of that but I, I think it's like anything almost where you know you're looking forward to star wars episode seven because it's been 20 years since a star wars film mm. or something like that and you're in the cinema and it starts playing what well, you get to the end of it and it was a great film but you're also like the excitement's gone yeah you know it's like <laughs> Part of part of the excitement is looking forward to something. Yeah, the build-up really? is the kind build-up, of yeah. its own event, and I think we kind of both of us uh, enjoy looking forward to seven so much that the game itself is almost like separate from that anticipation because yeah. this was something that was kind of sort almost accidentally teased back when they when Square did the tech demo for PS3. That's it. Um, and people were like, "Oh, well, then the game must be in production, right?" And I guess it wasn't. And then in 2015, they actually properly announced the remake was coming right so we've had all this time now it's 2020 the game's finally come out um and yeah i guess because um it's just like seven again it kind of feels like okay this is familiar but yeah unknown it's almost like dreamlike to see that that's it yeah i don't mean anticlimactic because it isn't but it's just that i think it was always for years at the back of my mind just something that was a dream but was never going to happen it's like when you see this thing like looking so like so nice like it's such a high quality like graphic representation of something that was so low poly back on the ps1 it feels almost like not kind of real to have it i almost put it in to, to, in the same league as the um the batman versus superman schneider cut um, <laughs> and what what i mean by that is is this that i just didn't think it would ever happen you know people are asking for it but is i thought the schneider cut happening it, well, not that's that's what oh, I'm right. getting so at. It's something that, that you, you know, don't think until would ever come. until it actually was in your hands, until you actually played it. It's like this can't be real. This can't mm. really be happening. Um, people don't get what they want, <laughs> you know, just just because they want it. Mm. Um, and uh, but but fortunately, uh, we do. This get time we, we did get it. I mean, we'll, yeah. we'll get into whether or not it meets expectations. Just to clarify, I'm not petitioning for a Snyder cut. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you are either. No. Just to get some background on on Fun Fantasy as a whole, um, for me personally, it's not a series I actually know much about. Mm. I played uh, some of the NES original, the very first one. I've touched on Fun Fantasy VI a little bit on the Super Nintendo because it was on the Super Nintendo Mini. Yeah. And I've played a little bit of the original Fun Fantasy, Final Fantasy VII on PS4, and I've got it on on Switch as well. But that's kind of it for me. I haven't played any of the other modern ones, no like 12 or 15 or any of that, but it's always been something that I've observed and never quite gotten into. So I haven't actually got the remake yet myself, and I was actually kind of waiting for this discussion because you can speak for yourself as you're much more into Final Fantasy. You've got like your own history with the the series and with Seven itself. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've got quite a long history with it. Um, It feels... It now feels quite funny to say it, but Final Fantasy was the first RPG I ever played. Um, Final Fantasy VII, sorry, was the first RPG I ever played. Um, and probably the first one I ever really saw. But my uncle got Final Fantasy VII. And, uh, and he just invited me around to his house one day and said, uh, I've got this new game, yeah, you need to come, to come and have a go on it. Um, and and I just never seen anything like it. Like, because of the... Um, loads of things impressed me about it. Um, I loved... Um, I always have loved RPG elements in games, and I still do. Anything where you can level up and you can unlock armor and weapons and that kind of thing always really mm. speaks to me. Chasing the um, carrot in the filling up the bars and sort of that kind of stuff. Yeah, like I've got Ring Fit for the Switch, and that's got RPG elements in it, and it's my favourite part of the game. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I love all those kind of things, um, and it had loads of FMV sequences, and that was on the PlayStation was one of the big sellers to, to me. I loved. F and V sequences. I would just rewatch them constantly, you know. Um, and it also had um, a lot of pre-rendered backgrounds. So, it, like, like Resident Evil, really, isn't it? And it yeah, looks a lot um, nicer because of their it, yeah. basically just images. But you know, back on SD TVs and back in that era, we just sort of thought these graphics were incredible. It's a nice trick, really. 
Well, they did, they did a trick as well that I hadn't seen before at the time where, you know, a train will pull into a station, full FMV sequence, and then when it stops, it goes into gameplay. And, and if you watch it back now, it jumps. You can see the, 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 the yeah. You can see a little change, yeah. But, but graphically, it looks really nice as it comes in. And you mm. kind of, because of the pre-rendered background, you're kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm actually playing the FMV sequence. So, yeah, so I played, I remember playing loads of Final Fantasy VII. And then I remember um, afterwards renting it from uh, a video shop. But I didn't actually own Final Fantasy VII after that, um, really, for a long time. But it, at my next... It wouldn't be my next book, but a few birthdays later, I got uh, Final Fantasy VIII. Oh, right. Um, and again, I, I think I played a bit of it at my own course, and was like, I really like this, and I like this series. And number eight spoke to me even more because it had a few more um, kind of steampunky sci-fi elements in it. Yeah, I, I hear that eight is a more of a contentious entry in the, the series, but I guess that's uh, that would be a conversation for another time, yeah. I suppose. It definitely is, but I guess, it, you know, you could argue this with a lot of game series that because it was the first one that I owned, it, it's always had a special place. Sure, yeah. To me, you know, I love the soundtrack and and loads of things like that. Um, and so yeah, so I had eight, and then around this time, my little brother got wildly into Final Fantasy series, and he played all the um, SNES ones and NES and everything. And then I suppose I kind of got out of the uh, series initially when they did eleven because it was online. Right, yeah. And yeah. I, I just at the time, I didn't have kind of the internet or the computer or the cash to do an online subscription kind of service. But I did get Final Fantasy XIII, um, which was on the PS3 and uh, the first one on the PlayStation 3. And I really liked that. It was actually the game that broke my PlayStation 3, gave it the, the uh, <laughs> yellow light of death. Isn't it that you somehow got the disc like trapped inside of it? And yeah, this... it, 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 it just wouldn't, it would just went into a boot cycle, the PlayStation, because I was playing it in the summer and it got really hot and it just shut off, got the yellow light of death, wouldn't turn back on. And so I had to buy a new console. And so my game and save were stuck inside that PlayStation. And then years later, I did get them back out and, uh, and actually finished the game. <laughs> there were some great um, games and gaming moments in that gen, I think seventh gen of gaming but when you look back on the 360's red ring and the ps3's yellow light and then just the wii as a whole it's like yeah. what a dark period in yeah. some ways it's really just like thank god that's over but yeah. most recently you've had 15 i suppose i did yeah and i had 15 and finished that yeah. to me as an outsider 15 is kind of like the bedrock of this seven remake in a way like the gameplay is similar if i'm not mistaken right yeah i th talking about the battle system in particular Final, this isn't like a shock, this battle system, because the Final Fantasy series has been going down this route for a while, yes. starting with Final Fantasy XIII, really, to get into this more action-oriented state. And, and, you know, if you also include Kingdom Hearts into that, mm. because from what I hear, I don't not played Kingdom Hearts that much, but from what I hear, the, the Kingdom Hearts three, is similar this to battle this. system is very, very yeah. similar to that, even more than, say, fifteen. So it's... It, it wouldn't. Hopefully, it's not a shock to people unless the, the last game they played in the series w was seven. Then this shouldn't be a shock to them coming to this one. They shouldn't be upset by the the, the more action oriented battle no. system because it's just been a, a a natural progression in the in the series. I played the demo, and uh, before this podcast, I also played through the portion of the original game, which is in that demo, just for comparison. Mm. Um, and it's it's night and day. So yeah. in a lot of ways, when they say remake, it's quite a broad term, I think, because it's sort of like more than a remake. It's like a completely different game. It's reimagining. Yeah, because the, the gameplay in the original is obviously totally turn-based and menu-based and um, there's no sort of dynamic character control really at all. And I think the big question with all of that is, with the time you've spent with, with Seven, the remake, yeah. do you think it's better to have played the original and then go on to the new version or could you just play the new version and say, forget that, that old one? Because really, back, maybe another example is on GameCube when they did the first remake of Resident Evil, that high resolution remake was so good that it really superseded the original PS1 game and there's no real yeah. need to play the original Resident Evil. If you're going to play Resident Evil 1, you play in the remake and now it's available in HD 
and it's available everywhere like that's the one that you play so i guess that's really what i'm asking is do you think yeah. that seven remake will ultimately will replace that ps1 game in the sort of go-to experience for seven i expect it i expect it will and it is one thing that is hard to say that at the moment is just because we haven't seen all, all of the episodes yet and how mm. many exactly there will be um and how that's kind of going to work because we still don't know if in the next episode that your um experience and things are going to carry over or if you're going to be back to square one or they're going to set everyone to level 30 or whatever we, we just don't know yet and that could have a uh, a detrimental effect obviously on recommendations for, for people to play it but right now i feel that the remake is probably the go-to version purely because and that's you know some people will say sacrilege on the original but i think for people that haven't played the original up to now they're going to find a lot of 90s playstation one gaming problems that you won't have in the remake mm. so you know you've, you've got yeah you know, obviously the graphics are very outdated yeah um like it, when you go back to it like you have yourself it's quite unbelievable really that how much your mind fills in the gaps like when you try and think of it and how good mm. it still is part you know the pre-rendered backgrounds things are very um good looking but other than arms waving around you know you don't get any it's um, the real emotion body, to it, yeah. no from from it's all, from dialogue, figures. It's all in the yeah it's all in the text and the text isn't spoken it's you you read it so you put that in yourself and so for anyone who's played the original, they, they would probably always say, oh, yeah, you've got to play the original because that, that will be the best. But if you try to actually be sensible about it, um, you know, the more readily available um, and kind of accessible to a degree version is probably going to be the easier sell to people. Mm. It's a bit more exciting and, you know, you, you, get, you get that extra story and character development, um, which is really good. Do, will ever does everyone does everyone and will everyone like the battle system? Hard to say. Um, it's 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 an action game now. Yeah, pretty much rather than a turn based game. I mean, as an outsider, and I would call myself an outsider of the Final Fantasy series because I really haven't played it properly. Yeah, I really like the battle system, and I feel like they mm. did a really good job of making it dynamic and real time, whilst also keeping that turn based stuff because you can still pick like the abilities and the spells yeah. and. You know, an element of that carries over. So I think that's a really nice shift. When I, I played the PS1 version today, something that I noticed was that the remake does this wonderful thing where it appears like they're showing you exactly what you saw, but with nicer graphics. And then you go back to the PS1 and really you realize just how many gaps they filled in. And that those were the gaps that your imagination filled in yourself when you played it. Yeah. That first shot where they pull out over Midgar, Midgar at yeah. the very beginning... When I first played that, which was a couple of years ago now, before the remake came out, I was really impressed with the layering they did with the PS1 graphics to make it feel like this vast city. You go right from Aerith's face straight out to this like, bird's eye view, and it's this massive like camera move. And still, it is big. But then in the remake on PS4, it lasts maybe four or five times as long and you really do see all the detail and like all these yeah. little sparks of the uh, all the vehicles yeah the, and... the marker reactor and all that stuff yeah and yeah. The extra people and it you could say oh yeah well, it looks the same but nicer but they've added so much and it's like it's a very nice trick for them to play where it's like we're giving you what you remember we've given you something that feels emotionally the same whilst actually expanding on it like such a great yeah. deal so I kind of want to get more into sort of a spoiler territory of you. Okay. Obviously, I've not played it, but I don't really mind. But anybody listening may not want to hear any, any spoilers. So if you could give sort of a, at first a vague idea of how far through the game you are. Well, I've played for about 13 hours. Okay. And I've got to the part of the slums where you first meet Aerith. Okay. When you crash through the church roof after um, sabotaging the Reactor 5. Okay. If you remember, so this is that part of the game. Too. Well, in the PS One version, that's maybe the first hour. Yeah. So to take within the first couple of hours, that to yeah. take you like over ten. I mean, have you been doing a lot of sort of exploration stuff? Or is I that... have. I've been taking my time with it, but but yeah, you can get an idea of somewhat for how they've expanded it. I've done all of the side missions that you can do, but yeah, it's still wildly wildly expanded from the original. Um, in really good ways. Right. So what's what's an example then of something they've added that you would say would be 
well, maybe maybe give me two if you've got one, but there must be things I've added which are positive and maybe some things I've added which are not so positive. Yeah. So has anything like stood out to you so far about like changes that you maybe would have wanted more of or less of? Well, so then a positive thing just to pluck out that they've changed, um, which I really liked, is um, Avalanche, your, your group, they've, they've given them a lot more um, character and uh, expression and, and, and moments in, in there. So everyone kind of gets fleshed out. And there's a character in it, Je- Jessie, if you, I don't mm. know if you remember Jessie. Um, and she's really um, brought to life now. Uh, and she's really funny and she's a really good character. And, uh, and so I really like her in the story. And so they've added in this whole new mission where you go up onto the plate um, where, you know, the, the, the rich and the posher people sort of live from the slums. And, uh, and she needs to go back to her parents' house and see her mom. Uh, and her dad has been injured uh, and he works for the Shimra Corporation. And so you need his key card so you can get into the facility to get some explosives for when you go to the reactor. Right. And so all this is new. So she goes into the house with her mom and some of the others, um, Wedge and Biggs, and you go uh, sneak into the back of the house and go and get the key card from the dad. And he's sleeping in this kind of um, kind of a hospital bed that's been made up in, in, in his room. And then you go on to do this mission um, and they introduce a new villain, Roach, his name is. You're, you get to do a motorbike sequence quite early on. Again, another thing I really like because there was it was a it was a kind of a standout moment in the original because um, it just went really arcadey uh, and it's it's good fun actually. It's very dynamic, and uh, and so this Roach turns up and he he rides a motorcycle himself, and so you 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 have a, a battle with him on the motorbikes, but he like basically makes almost makes his motorbike fly like the kind of jumps and flips he does with it. You you know exactly what I mean yeah. out of like animes and things. Um, where he can just do crazy things with his motorbike and kind of, you know, when when um, people use motorbikes to kind of almost like hit people in the face, and stuff like that. you know, it's almost like that. It's like so over the top. Yeah, the, the motorcycle must weigh like a couple of grams at most, sort of thing. But it, it's <laughs> yeah. like a sledgehammer yeah. all the same. And yeah, yeah I can um, imagine. And so yeah, he he shows up, and so all of this is new, um, just fills in kind of background, and that's that's really good. It's really nice, and that really leads me to ask the question is that when you do these things like oh i've met jesse's parents and whatever else they've added is that a fan service for people like yourself who have more of a memory of the the original if i played it without any sort of knowledge that that had been added do you think it would stick out more or would i even notice it or would i appreciate that you know you've you like jesse because i guess you remember that she was a bit player that's now been fully fledged yeah um Whereas to me, I, my only knowledge of it would be kind of from the remake. So would it stand out as something special or would it just feel like busy work? Good question, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I think, um, I mean, it's a very short sequence, that part. Yeah. And then you get into more action again. There's a there's a, a fight and a boss battle straight afterwards. Sure. So, so you'd probably remember the boss battle more than the sort of more tender sort of moment, I suppose where you've got her talking about her dad who's been injured and not been able to see her family so much because she's now moved to the slums and she's pretending to them, this is all stuff that, you know, she's pretending to them that she's an actress. Mm. I think you'd pick up on that even not knowing anything about, you know, so much about the original. I think you'd still be like, okay, I'm now getting some emotional uh, weight from these characters and kind of seeing what they've had to, to kind of sacrifice for their beliefs. Sure. Um, and so, so I, I, I do think that it would still stand out to you. But then if we talked about something that was that I'm less fond of, say, for instance, mm. uh, they've introduced these new characters. It, I think that people are called, uh, whether the game does, but I've read somewhere, I think they might be called Whispers. Okay. And they're, they're kind of ghost ghoul-like figures. They're just like um, hoods hoods and cloaks but with nothing inside they kind of like ghost apparitions um that, that turn up around um Aerith straight away at the start and when cloud kind of touches her he he can see them and this is how they're kind of tying like sephiroth into the first part of the story more than they would have because i know that sephiroth yeah. as a character i mean people know sephiroth i don't think we need to explain him per se no. but 
he's not a big part of the early part of the game, which then is the, that is exactly what they've made in the remake. So I guess they have to find a way to inject him into the story somehow, which I know they've done because yeah. you know they tease him even in the demo a little bit. Oh, he appears. He appears um, within the first hour, really. And is that related maybe to, to like these a... whispers? Well, not in the part I've played yet, okay. but maybe it will eventually. I'm. It's quite fun for me in a way that maybe this is why they put them in is that i'm i've got things to discover about the game um that 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 are completely new um but they're like i don't know they're kind of like when they first appear maybe it's just me talking as someone who's played the original but they they stick out kind of almost yeah like it'd be interesting to see how you would react to them because to me, they kind of just don't almost don't gel with what's going on and with the world. It is they, they're kind of that, yeah. a bit too fantastical, maybe, with something that's very um, sci-fi, I suppose. And uh, I don't know, they're a little bit jarring to me so far. But given the benefit of the doubt, because it hasn't progressed, they haven't progressed that far, and I don't know what the the payoff with them is. There might be some grand reveal. Sure, yeah. Um, but they're they're something that that would be again interesting for someone not having played it would they stand out to them or would they just think like oh this is this is interesting this is intriguing yeah you know, was that in the original it reminds me a bit again of resident evil when i i played the the remake of the first one before i played the original and then i might yeah. gone back and played the ps1 uh, version there's things missing that to me are kind of like quintessential elements of resident evil and then to find that they weren't always there is very odd so it would be interesting to play the remake first, perhaps, and then go back to the PS1 game and be like, do things stand out as missing rather than standing out as being additions? So that could be... I think that is the way mm. the order you should do it. Um, I think, actually, it would probably be quite nice, say, in your situation, to play through Final Fantasy VII Remake, finish the whole thing, then maybe play the entirety of the original. Maybe, yeah. So then you've got that point of reference for the things that happen later on and kind of an idea of the overall story maybe for the other episodes. And it probably won't make you feel like you've got to wait so many years to play this <laughs> of the game. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm interested to see where these sort of um, whispers uh, progress because the bit I've just played where you're in the church with Aerith, um, they appear there and that sequence is quite different because originally um the shinra soldiers turn up and um they're kind of uh bothering um Aerith and you climb up in the rafters and you can push barrels down mm. and you have to kind of choose the correct barrel yeah to i push remember down this on them and, one yeah game. i didn't and really care for that so much i always felt it was something you had to do trial and error yeah. and on, few, on other playthroughs you'd get it right i, think I don't think you could ever do it first way. time yeah it's... yeah there are, I think there are a few things in the game that are like that. There's a classic bit of flipping switches as well mm, okay. in time, which, <laughs> I'll look which forward is, to that. yeah. Um, and that, that is in the remake, but it's a lot easier. And they do kind of, there's some nods to annoying parts in the original where like Barrett will make fun of it. Oh, and okay. Kind of doing a nod. That's very much a, um, a wink for you. Yeah, for, for, for fans of the original. So, yeah, so in this sequence now where you're in the church. You do go up in the rafters and earth's down the bottom, but you kind of climb across the rafters by your hands and there's only one uh, instance where you can actually chop down a chandelier. So there's no barrels, there's one chandelier. Okay. And then the whispers kind of turn up and your different paths get blocked off from you and you kind of have to work your way through. So you kind of get the same result, but, but that bit has been kind of quite reimagined. Mm. More so than something added in. So that is... A direct part where they've said we're changing how that played out the start and the end are the same but actually the mechanics are now different and i suppose things like that might play into what is the definitive version for the future yeah because especially with how these whispers turn out so now it's here and you've played a nice chunk of it do you think it, it's has it met your expectations is it as good as you hoped is it a bit anticlimactic like you 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 worried it might be or yeah, are you sort of still waiting to make that judgment before you finish it? After you finish it, rather. Uh, so it is early to give a, an, an all-round opinion of it, but I think I'd say it's surpassed my expectations, really. Okay. Um, because I never really thought it was going to happen, as we've said, and I didn't think they could improve it the way they have. 
I always felt that we were probably going to get, not more recently with the recent trailers, but when it was announced and stuff, I always felt we were probably going to get, you know, kind of an up version, sort of. Was it? I didn't yeah. think... I didn't think until maybe I played the Resident Evil 2 remake because that to me is one of the first where it's kind of completely exp- you know expanded on the original in in so many ways that almost unrecognizable mm. um one's the other and uh and I just didn't think they could they could do that with how big a game this is um but they've just improved it in so many ways and and uh I mean the graphics are like out of this world really it's one of the best looking games of this gen i would say for consoles yeah. it's yeah really pretty the... and with the amount of stuff that goes on in every individual fight and it doesn't flinch it's great i will talk about one problem in a second but they're overall really they've not cut any corners they've they've put as much uh, care and attention and detail into the into every se- separate element and there's just like fun things when you're on this mission with jesse that i, I mentioned you're, you kind of go slightly on the outside of the, the plate, so you're hundreds and hundreds of feet above the slums, and you go over some um, walkways that are kind of just pieces and sheets of metal, and you can see over the edge, you can kind of see in between them. And when I was playing it, you know, I'm playing on quite, quite a big TV, it all kind of gave you vertigo when you move right. the camera to look down at the slums, and knowing you've been down there, like in the last hour of the game or something, yeah, it kind of like gave you, and the characters react to that as well. You know, like Barrett will say he doesn't like heights and stuff like that. <laughs> but but yeah, you look at it, and it was yeah, it kind of the graphics are so good that it, it gave you um, sort of vertigo. And when you're down in the slums, and you can see um, the plate above you with all the reactors and things like that from underneath, like that's just like really impressive sights. Yeah, it looks like something that would rival um, uh, films, mm. um, kind of special effects and kind of that sense of scale and grandeur. Um, and that's that's really impressive. The only downside to the graphics is, I, I think I've seen now actually that people reckon it's kind of a, like an Unreal Engine kind of bug thing. Oh, I've heard about this where you get these muddy textures popping up. Yeah, there's, pop, there's a lot of popping of mm. textures, um, which mostly only I found so far has occurred in the slums. And it's when you run especially which is kind of understandable. Yes. So you run it, can't keep up with the loading. But there's one area where you, where you stay in your kind of little like hotel room. Um, the door yeah. is just this horrible muddy texture and it keeps having close-ups because you <laughs> see them go in and out of it in cutscenes. I've seen it on, on social media, yeah. This particular door is getting a bit of a name for itself. It's funny, it's like, yeah, the thing with it's this so, is... so bad. They're saying oh, is this an, an unreal bug that exists in the engine and therefore it's not a problem unique to Final Fantasy? Fair enough if that's the case. But I will say this bug does not appear in the demo. You know, the, the sales pitch for this game did not have this problem and yet yeah. the main game seems to have, you know, maybe significant would be too um, too strong a word, but it's noticeable, right? That this this is a, a common yeah. issue that is yet to be fixed. So it's sad that it happens in the first couple of hours of the game mm. because you're so hyped up and and things, and you get to these slums, and then you know, like I said, this, the game sort of slows down a little bit there, and you see these muddy textures, and you're kind of a bit like, oh no, this you know, is this going to be kind of representative of the rest of the game? Yes. On the whole, the, the graphics are just amazing, and any time you see a, a close up of characters and. You know, they've got pores on their skin mm. and uh, stuff like that. It's yeah, it's just really good. And it, we're going back to what we said earlier about you filling in the gaps in your mind. Like Barrett looks like how I thought he looked in the original. Yeah. Whereas the original, he's like five polygons stuck together <laughs> or something. Um, but now, you know, you can see you can see how the gun kind of connects to his arm, and he has like this. Um, there's like this fabric that comes out the end of it that's obviously meant to cushion the bit of his arm that goes yeah. into the gun and stuff like that. And it, it just, and he's just huge as well. He's like the muscliest person you've ever seen. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it just kind of, all the characters get so brought to life. I think the character design is is really impressive because they still look very, very anime. Like, um, you know, Jesse and Tifa and that, they don't look like real people. But they also don't look creepy at all. They're very, very yeah. close to looking like a real living human being and yet yeah. also looking like a cartoon. And they've got some really 
nice character design throughout. And I think that, yeah, the way they've kind of just walked the line on that, it's just like yeah. masterful. Except for Wedge, who probably remains closest to his PS1 form. It's just a bit uneven, at least within the early yeah. Avalanche characters, yeah. which is a shame because all of the main ones look flawless, basically. Especially if you, if you compare Cloud's appearance to his 2015 trailer appearance, which back then, I think, was outstanding. It looked so good. And then you look at how it is in 2020 in direct comparison, and 15 looks like a corpse <laughs> heated up, basically. It's <laughs> amazing how good it looks in just this space of time, even though we were all so you know, overwhelmed by it in the first time, yeah. place. So I guess something else I'm kind of wondering, and we will both be in the dark about this, is that, yes, we waited a great many years for Remake to come out, and now it's happened. Um, we don't know when the next instalment's going to be, or how many there will be, two or three or, or maybe even more. Do you think that when the time comes for the second part to release, will it benefit or suffer from the split because the excitement for remake is now i think for the fans i don't think there'll be a huge amount of difference i think that people are just going to be clamoring for the next part but overall i think it will be um with the wider public i think there will be less excitement and i think potentially probably it'll be less successful because i think there will be lots of people out there that either just play this one don't finish this one so they might just be like, yeah, I've played that. That was quite good fun. Mm. Maybe they won't carry on. And, and also maybe a, another problem is they can finish this section and they can go on Wikipedia and see what happens next. My assumption is that part two of Remake will be, it's, it's more fair game for Square to be like, this is the lesser known part of the game. Um, it's going to most likely sell a lot less than part one, even if it's successful it means that they can play around a bit more and, you know, big story beats might change more drastically because they are less coveted. And I know yeah. there are some things coming, like, I won't spoil them now, although I feel like there are spoilers in in 7, which are of the Darth Vader level, shall we say, yeah. where oh, yeah. everybody knows yeah. some of the stuff that happens in the late game of, of Final Fantasy 7, which means they probably will want to change it more in Remake Part 2 because... You know, they want to surprise people and give some give people something they want to buy. And then again, it comes back to what we were saying before. It's like, well, which version should a person play? Whether Remake split into three, four or more segments, hopefully it's going to be two, if you ask me. Um, if it's vastly different, then there will, there will never be a consensus, really. I think that's definitely right. And, and I, I suppose, you know, if we're using the sort of Resident Evil analogy as well, if you go back and play that Resident Evil 1 or 2 and you've got the tank controls mm -hmm. and things like that, you, you're probably going to get annoyed um, and, and maybe want to move on. But Final Fantasy 7, it, it's aged probably better because it's turn-based. And if you like that, you like it, don't you, really? Yeah, yeah. and turn-based hasn't aged, really. It's just been uh, used to how could it... Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, maybe there's, maybe there's never going to be a, a definitive version and, and maybe there sort of doesn't need to be. I mean, I, I think one thing that, that I find interesting is sort of thinking, well, where do these remakes stop? Like, is this a new thing? Like, these proper remakes? Mm. Like, are we going to... Because obviously Resident Evil has progressed. We've got three. There's rumours now, a four. Quite obviously, of yeah. four. With Resi, almost certainly you're going to see another remake. And anybody who, yeah. who thinks they're going to stop, well, whether you think they should or not, remake 4 is its own question but the idea that they wouldn't is just like balmy to me that game's getting remade at some point it's just gonna happen change the subject slightly the soundtrack is amazing mm. i mean the original game had a great soundtrack it's, it's, yeah, yeah it's really probably is. the best game soundtrack ever <laughs> um and well <laughs> just saying um and uh and and now they've they've kind of They've remixed a lot of the songs, um, or they've they've done new versions of them, and they're all really good. Mm. And and some of them are quite different, but but also retain enough of the melody and things that you recognise it straight away. Um, and of course, you know the location you're in as well, and you know what piece of music is going to play. The music is is just yeah. I can't think of anyone that has played the original that will play this and not want to buy the soundtrack. Even with my limited um, exposure to the soundtrack of the original, I get a little tingle when I hear tunes coming back. Yeah. 
something that really um you know got my nostalgia going when i first one of the first things you see when you turn on the game um they bring up the title screen um with uh cloud's buster sword yeah sort of in, in the ground and it comes up and it says oh what camera uh, type do you want do you want to invert x and y and this kind of thing and it's saying it to you and it's kind of getting you it says to you to basically to try the stick and and um and see how it looks and as you do you realize that that buster saw they're showing you is actually a 3d yeah. render and you're looking all around it is it in the demo no it's not but i because i played the ps1 game today i can really appreciate what you're saying is that that's a very famous two-dimensional menu screen. Yeah, is now and I was like, you can move around it. it, so. it, it but it shocked me. Right. It, it sounds really silly to say, but it kind of like really surprised and shocked and wowed me. And it's such a simple thing. Um, and I just really liked that touch. It, it's one of those things that seems so simple, but it would have taken so much planning to kind of get right and to come up with. Um, and yeah, it, it just really appreciated as as like a, you know as a fan of the series. As a final kind of prediction i suppose how long well a how long do you think you'll be waiting for part two and b how long do you think is um an acceptable period of time to wait <laughs> i think that we won't wait as long as everyone's predicting right you know i mean i think people are being quite melodramatic and really with it yeah and saying you know five years and plus or whatever and I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I Square, everyone knows, they, they take their time over releases. You know, there's the gap between Final Fantasy games is normally a long time. Mm. Getting on for like, you know, sort of seven years or something between them. Um, so, yeah, they, they, they traditionally are known for taking their time over things. But they've got the engine now as well. You know, and that would have been... You, you, there's got to be such a, a barrier at the start of just how is this game going to look? They've got the character models. They've got all that sort of stuff. Um, so I reckon I reckon we'll probably see the second part in maybe like 2022. Do you think that's that's both how long you want to wait and how long you think you'll be waiting? So you don't think it will be any longer than that? I think it's how long I'll be willing to wait. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, and uh, I, I, yeah, I, I hope, I do think that's when it will come okay. out. Um, but could I see it being, yeah, no, I can't see it being longer than that. I can't see it being 2023, personally. Mm. Whoever made the choice to split it up must have had strong conviction to do so, because it's, mm. it's obviously there's a commercial benefit from selling Final Fantasy VII twice, but they must have wanted to include what they've included and know that they could get a good return on the second or maybe even third part. Um, but I think they know that if they stretch out too much into three parts and then you've got a six or seven or eight year period where people are waiting for a story to conclude, that they already know the conclusion of effectively. Yeah. That it might end up being an overall negative, you know, um, diminishing returns sort of situation. So I think I'm optimistic that you'll wait a little bit longer than you're expecting to, but you'll get a final part in that second part, I would hope. And it'll be a more open world experience, but maybe a bit closer to what the first half of 15 was like. Because I know that 15 is a very sort of broad game and then they sort of funnel you down a, a corridor at the end of 15. Yeah. But yeah, I think it might be the opposite way around where you have this nice linear, familiar, famous piece of seven in Midgar. And then the second game is a slightly longer, but more broad open world experience perhaps. And I think once there are the two parts side by side and one is this kind of game and the other is is different in that way then it'll be easier to see why they did it in the first place you know th there's been remakes in the past like that just let you forget that there was ever an original sometimes that happens but other times a remake comes out and it's it's just like you wish they hadn't done it and i think it's just going to be a bit of time before you know people will look back at remake and and know for sure what the general consensus is, whether it was an improvement or not, I suppose. I'd completely agree. I mean, you know, people won't like me saying this because I am a big fan of the game, but like I wasn't terribly wowed by um, the remake remaster of Shadow of the Colossus. Right. Um, they didn't change enough Because it was just a skin, basically, isn't it? Yeah, there was, there was the odd bit here and there, but they, they didn't change enough. It's the original engine and... Um, yeah, yeah they, they could have done more. Um, 
so and that was like i said earlier that is kind of the level i was expecting almost right. with the, originally with the final fantasy 7 remake um and what we've got is just like way and beyond what what i think most people could have ima imagined in terms of effort and budget that they've put into it um i just hope that they keep on the same path for the these other episodes mm. maybe this is all part of a plan that we've got what we wanted for the midgar bit for the most part um the the, the closer um remake and that, and yeah maybe it is time to, to kind of tell a slightly different story and uh and you know upgrade the story i suppose it's fun funnily enough though it, it's it resonates a lot with modern society you know with the energy crisis and, and, stuff, and things yeah. like yeah it's it 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 seems really kind of pertinent now almost more than ever it's probably more relevant now than it was back in 97 yeah. or yeah. whatever it was it came out um uh, uh, yeah and i think that's why adding in these extra story touches just add to the game so much because uh because yeah it kind of hits home even harder but it's really good to hear that you're positive on it because it would have been a shame if uh, all that excitement had come to nothing and it sounds like so far they've really delivered on, on what you oh, wanted and you yeah. know, I'm excited to, to get hold of it eventually and, and, and join, you know, in the fun. Um, so yeah, really yeah, happy it's about just that. a, it's, it's a, it's just a class act. It's, it, it you know, the, the Resident Evil 2 kind of comparison is exactly right. It's that level of kind of amazement really of how far games have come mm. and the technology and, uh, and the artistry of it. Yeah. So yeah, highly, highly recommended easily go on. Um, because yeah, there's just so much to it, and this is talking with only thirteen hours, <laughs> uh, yeah, played. Uh, God knows what comes next. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for sharing your uh, experience so far. I look forward to to getting it, um, and I guess um, you know we'll be back to discuss remake part two maybe in a, a decade yeah. or so. <laughs> so yeah, without doubt. <laughs> If you liked uh, listening to the Foster Pay podcast, we've got a few other podcasts already um, ready for you to listen to. There's even a couple of quizzes there that you can play along to. Um, and we'll probably be doing another music quiz um, not too long from now. And of course, you can also look up Foster Arcade on YouTube and enjoy Alex's and mine uh, video series. But there's more than 50 episodes of us just like playing video games and talking about them exactly like this. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for listening and we'll see you around. Bye.